I got this sweet Toyota 4Runner for free because I had the truck and trailer and was able to go pick it up when it broke down. Brian's Mobile One. In this video, we're going to tear it down and find out exactly what failed. Oh, we got metal hanging out. We got glitter and we got chunks. I've got this inspection cover open. I've got all the radiator and everything out of the way so I can crank it over. And I'm expecting it to kind of seize bind and make a grinding sound like it does when it's running. All it makes is like a tin rattle sound. You hear that tinny sound? Ooh, it drags and clicks going backwards though. All right, well, I'm gonna drop the oil pan. I'm gonna pull a couple of caps. Hopefully nobody's been into this and it's never been rebuilt before. All the thousands of an inch I can get. There we go. Oh, we got metal hanging out. We got glitter and we got chunks. It's an engine, folks. Oh, well, that's what we expected. Let's get some close-ups. Okay, so okay. the first sign that something's wrong, shrapnel in the pickup screen. Second thing I saw is glitter in the oil pan. There's kind of a silver sheen and a silver goo running down into the pan. And then when you look, there's a bunch of metal creeping down the bottom. That's not a good sign at all. I might have thrown a rod and just not seen it yet. That would account for the tink, tinking and clinking that you hear as you rotate it and the hanging up going around backwards. There's only four cylinders. What I'm looking for here is all of these end caps for the connecting rods, any of them to be black or cooked looking. They don't look too bad, but it doesn't look good, folks. And then as I was turning the engine over, I could hear kind of a, a tinking, clinking, clunking, almost like gears of teeth. And if I look in here, that's a chain that just quits. It's not on there and it just stops. See one chain's on and one chain's off. So I'm saying we got some timing issues. Speaking of timing, if you look at the crankshaft position sensor, it should have been a code because that thing is so covered in metal. It's a magnet, but just not where it counts, I guess. So we lost a timing chain. One other minor discovery, not a big deal. Our exciter ring, tone ring, whatever for timing. It's for schitzeled. As you saw, this Toyota 3RZ FE has two timing chains. One to drive two camshafts over the top of the head, and it has two balance shafts. And if you lose one like we did on the balance shafts, you got more problems than that. When you find something that's burnt like that, you know to tear that down and usually find bad bearings that got overheated. Looking at this, we can go through and look at the connecting rods for being bent. This one's got riding on it, which indicates this has probably been torn down and rebuilt before. You can see the pickup to the oil pump, it looks burnt. All the main bearing caps, they look a little burnt. And some of the balance weights on either side of the main bearing caps look burnt. So I think the most damage is going to be uh, from the oil pump not giving enough lubrication to the crank. Barking up the right tree, pulling the radiator and all that out. Definitely lost, lost the timing chain. And that's why it wasn't running good. It says it had to be in third gear to make 75 miles an hour and not block traffic. And then it just quit. So I figured he burned it up, but he had good oil in it. It's got oil in it. So the fact that this had stuff sucked up into it means that it was still sucking oil. Oil pump's probably still good after failure, which is good because everything else stays lubricated. So now we're going to play cold dark. <laughs> All the women get excited. Ooh, now that's more like it. Poldark, I love Poldark. That's an amazing show. Let's watch that. So I turn the engine over and it leaks more. Uh, cold, 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 dark. You see how light this one is and this one is? You see how dark that one is? So that's probably where that bearing got spat out. And then when we look at the main bearing cap right by the oil pump up here, it's a little bit on the dark side. Mostly this guy though. So that's the one we're gonna to wanna to pull out. So, uh, if I can get this sucker to pull around, aim some bolts at me. I'm gonna pull these two caps off. You see as I'm cranking this, I'm getting more oil circulation. That's a good sign. Anyway, pulling these out, they look black. These are main bearing caps. And these others are oil pump. But these 12.1s here, these are rod bearing nuts. As I pull those bolts out, they smelled skunky. 
And I'm not talking like a little bit. I'm talking just stink. This ain't coming off. It's rocking and knocking though. There's no gap. It's this one right here. Yeah, this is bad. That should have been knocking. So I think I can confirm the main bearing right here is rough. It got hot. Uh, the cap looks good. Uh, the cap for the rod's a little spun, and you'll see why. So here's the crank main bearing. It's actually kind of pretty. It looks great. This one, not so much. It got a little roughed up. So we can see the end of one bearing here and the end of another there. That had to be hot. Timing chain, it's just hanging out. What's up, chain? This is what it looks like in the oil pan. You never get all the oil out when you change your oil. There's still a little bit left in the bottom. You look in there, there's all kinds of metal chunky stuff in there. Reach in and grab it. I don't know what that is, but it looks big. It looks like it just got folded up back and forth a bunch of times. So you look at the pieces in here, and they're just really fine. Like what you'd expect after using a chainsaw. Behold the carnage. Uh, may not recognize these. Not all engines have them. Straight four cylinders typically will have them. They are balancing shafts. What do balancing shafts do? A uh, four cylinder, instead of being oriented on the crankshaft like a triangle or a six point star or a normal five point star, they are all at 180 degrees. There's an equation for how you lay out the pistons in order to get them to balance properly. A four cylinder, everything is all in a line. If you look at a crankshaft for a four cylinder engine, it's all really flat and it has a bunch of secondary uh, balancing issues. So those balancing issues are caused because when this is at the bottom part of the rotation of the crank, so if you cut the crank in half as far as the rotation of it, everything at the lower part, this is actually moving slower than when it's at the top. At the top it's really fast up, really fast down, and what that causes is extra inertia or momentum or kick and that's what these get rid of. When the net secondary forces are up, these swing down. They go and counteract that and smooth it right out. This helps to add longevity to the engine, but in order to do that, these things have to rotate at twice the speed of the crankshaft because it's a four stroke engine, you got a camshaft that's half the speed of the crank so that you, you know, like not every time it goes down this uh, pistons fire, that would be a two stroke engine. So in order to counteract that, these have to go double time. And they're counter rotating so that they cancel each other out to the sides and to the inside. And so they're doing work at the bottom, they're doing work at the top, and so on and so forth. This one is a counter rotating one. If you line them up, you can see that the teeth don't line up until you take this guy into account. And then you can see that the timing chain lines up. That's the chain that we lost. These things are moving really fast, that's what you need to know. When they're moving really fast, they're riding on a slick uh, oil film that is in this bearing. These are the four bearings here and here. You can see that they had some problem at the other end of them. Uh, these are not supported at the end of the engine block. Uh, when you look at the engine block when I was showing the underside of it, when we're looking for cold and dark, you'll notice that this same black color is found throughout the engine block. You can see where the engine block got really hot. This is ground zero where balance shaft bearings died. You can see the normal virgin color of the engine block. Now contrast that with this before the block was cleaned. Ultimately, this piece here got munched up by the piston from number three and got uh, ejected. You can see that these match. You've got the female end here and then you've got the male end there. And beyond that, you can't really recognize it. It's been smashed beyond recognition. That fell off the end of it. We'll pretend that this one is this one. It was on here and just kind of migrated off and went off the end of it. When it did that, it came off at about cylinder four or cylinder three, and it just munched the heck out of it with the piston skirt, just went like that. Uh, with the bearing gone, you can see where it got smeared because it got too hot. It had some oil in effect. I think that some of the oil journals got covered over. Um, a good example of how oil journals get covered over is on this piston, it's supposed to have uh, a gusher or a squirter right here that squirts the cylinder wall. 
and that's just totally blocked off I mean it's just full of metal right there so it's not doing any good uh, this is a split bearing just like you have on a uh, crank main bearings and it basically one of them ran over the other one it just they got thin and just kind of overlapped once that happens you're kind of screwed the oil that's supposed to be floating all of this comes through a hole in the crankshaft the crankshaft takes on oil from the oil pump up at the front that got full of metal and garbage and some of that garbage got into this uh, connecting rod bearing that you see here you can see it's got that little hole that little hole is supposed to line up with this right here you can tell because the indexing uh, tab it goes with the hole there and it lines up like you can see there so that the oil will go out that and this is a smaller hole than what this is and it's just made to so it won't get clogged up but it sure did when these bearings wear out you get this foil flaking kind of an effect you can see how this is still stuck to it a little bit you can peel that off those cover up where the oil journals are and then bad things happen these have huge oil ports on them even on the bearing it's still just huge I mean that's just some of the biggest oil lubrication you have in here but that's due to the high speed that these turn at so when these don't get oil or the bearings go on or something gets smeared over like we saw on this one you can see where the metal left here and left there the amount of heat and the amount of friction that's created is just off the charts so this one seized up I had to really work and bang and pry to get this one out of there this one came right out no problem that's because this bearing was still good and this one it made a big hole <laughs> it's a big mess so I deleted this and I'm gonna be doing a video on the delete kit it was LC engineering who makes the kit um, you see a lot of deletes for the 3RZ FE and you see a lot of them on other engines like the Mitsubishi Evo everybody's always deleting these now if these are supposed to prolong the life of the engine by reducing vibration why are people deleting them why are we getting rid of them this is why this is why and uh, this is why uh, because it's a moving part more moving parts more things to fail but especially because of the speed of these things and the rotating mass you get better acceleration with them not being in there because you don't have to have as much drag parasitic drag on the crank um, but as far as the vibration that can shorten the life but not compared to having a catastrophic failure like this from revving up quick and down and up and you know this may or may not have been the cause of the failure I think it may have been um, but because of the high speed and vibration and all of that and uh, the wear here I think the wear went from here where this thing got smoked into having the other ones get smoked as well but talk about holy smoke look how dark that is as for my comments about the camshaft and all of that uh, the oil circuit you've got different circuits to where it's pumping it up to the cylinder head for the camshafts and then it also has it go out here and then there's all kinds of squirters and things especially in modern engines for these you've got all kinds of opportunities for oil to get in here so you look at the holes in here there's rings for the oil as it gets scraped in there it'll uh, drop it back out here and back into the oil pan but there's just a whole strategy to where if one thing fails other things are protected uh, but more than anything it's just efficient to just send the oil out to everything all at once and then let it drain back in um, as far as the timing on these things you uh, this isn't going to be a whole video about balancing shafts but it's kind of pertinent you can see the timing marks for that stay tuned uh, in the next videos I'm going to be building this engine I'm going to be doing the delete kit from LC engineering I'll show you more about that and the things that they do to overcome and maintain oil pressure uh, by replacing a bearing like this with a blank um, you could reuse a bearing like this and then just index it <laughs> but it's more foolproof to just have it not have any holes at all that way nobody's gonna mess it up or read it wrong stay tuned subscribe ring that bell and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching be sure to click like and subscribe bonus footage at the end okay, that is fun I would hate to do this in my three-quarter but I love doing it in this Don't care. Got plenty of clearance, nice smooth ride.